ambulance service. There's a patient breathing. She's in labour. Every minute of every day, the ambulance service answers our cries for help. From the crews on the ground saving lives. One, two, three. Just keep going. To the staff in control making the split second decisions on who should get help. I've got another cat one. I hope to God that's not real. <laughs> God, this is crazy. The North East Ambulance Service delivers emergency care for the 2.7 million people of Newcastle and beyond. We're coming as fast as we can. We've got multiple crews travelling. Oh, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to look after you. This is the story of how both the region and the service that cares for them are struggling to bounce back through the most testing times. We are one big ambulance service. One big family. Saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. Thank you very much. It's ours. Welcome to the North East. It's Wednesday morning and the start of the day shift for the North East Ambulance Service. Good morning, Jude. Good morning. Good morning. Dispatcher Jude will be running the North Desk alongside communications officers Jordan and Haley. Think it's going to be busy? Yeah. Yes. We can cope, Haley. Yeah. She've got me to do. Oh, yeah. All I'm saying. We've got Jordan, remember, to do. Got the dream team. <laughs> They will be looking after over half of the ambulances that serve the 2.7 million people in the region. Oh, it's chilly this morning. Oh, it's cold when you're tired, though. Indeed. Man alive, were you tired this morning? I was not. Tired and what might be politely described as cranky. I was not. Running out of Blucher in central Newcastle, our crewmates and partners, Kaylee and Georgina, on Bravo Lima 331. I wonder what the North East has to throw at us today. Hello, how are you? Hello, Zoe. I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I love your lashes. Thank you. Are we meeting on Tuesday for coffee? Yes. Cool. Paula and Phil are on Hotel Alpha 332. Oh, they're lovely. Did you know the Dalmatians are white when they're born and their spots develop later? I did not know that. I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Yeah, I'm not gonna uh, I'm eating in five days um, on a litre of vodka a day. I'm just in a bad place. How old are you? 38. There's someone in the address with you, or are you by yourself? My girlfriend left me, I'm suicidal. Have you planned how you'll end your life? Yeah. Do you you're gonna do that now? Yeah. The nearest available crew to the suicidal patient are Paula and Phil. They are 13 minutes away. This has come through as a 38-year-old male, uh, feeling suicidal, trying to cut his wrists. Liter of vodka a day, 38-year-old. I think that's got worse as well, though, since the pandemic. Suicidal. Yeah. Without a doubt. And I think we'll be getting younger and younger and younger. It's scary, really. Hello, I'm Phil. This is Paula. Can we come in and have a chat with you? Champion. We're going to open these curtains, going to have a bit of light in here. So, have you phoned for us this morning, John? Mm. Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay, what made you phone for help? I'm dying. Okay, what makes you think that? I haven't eaten in five days. I'm drinking whiskey. I'm trying to cut my wrist yesterday. Right, okay. Are you having these thoughts at the moment of hurting yourself? Every second of the day, I. All right, what's, what's caused that, do you know? I got engaged and she's left me, so... How long ago was that? Sunday. Sunday. She put the ring there and left me. Right. Have you been drinking since Sunday, then? I've been drinking like a fucking fish, mate. Give us your hand there, John. I'll do your blood sugars, all right? Uh, I've been an alcoholic for a long time. Have yeah, OK. It's just gone a bit worse. Yeah. You know, any breakup's hard, but when you're, when you're particularly vulnerable as well, it is very difficult. Which one for? Do you have any friends? 
close by or anything like that? Any Not relatives? really. I think no. I've lost them all because okay. of my drinking. I love her. Uh, she's gone. Have you, had, have you had any contact from her at all no. since the weekend? Okay. John, uh, what would you like to happen today? I want her back. OK. And I'm going to drink myself to death. Would you like to speak to somebody face to face? I don't want to die. I know that's what you want and that's how you feel. We cannot leave you here <sighs> while you're saying things like that. We just can't. So we and are you married? Oh, that's an awful long story, John. <laughs> that's that's for a whole new day, that one. I just wanted to marry her, right? And that's gone. I know, but I'm not making promises because I don't know the girl at all, but it might just be she might want need to know that you are going to get some help. She'll make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Finish your, finish your tab. You've, you've made the right choice, John, today, Colin. What? You've accepted and recognised that you've needed help, which is a really, really big step. I'll come with you, but... Smashing. Come on, then. Come on, we'll get you sorted. We look after you. Of course we'll look after you. Of course we'll look after you. Oh, well, let's make a move. Nice and slowly on the stairs. You've had quite a lot of drink. I don't want you falling and hurting yourself. If you're going to fall, fall on Phil. We're just up there, all right? We'll just go on the side door. Sit yourself on here, mate. Kick your legs up. I will kill myself. Don't want you to do that. John, if we could get you the right help, you might feel differently about it, you know. No. No. Why? Because I want to die. Do you understand? I don't understand what you're telling us. What we'll do is we'll get you some help, though. To see if we can help. help. There is no help. But you've called us you've today. Called for some help. You've called us today because you obviously want some help, haven't you? I'm dying. John, John, let's just going to start beeping. Just sit down. Careful, fella. We don't right. want you to hurt yourself. You feel str panicky. Yeah? Mm. Well, while you're in here, you're perfectly safe. You're absolutely safe with us, aren't you? Yeah? While Paula and Phil are treating John. Candle and service is the patient breathing. Um, I don't think so. Is that chest rising and falling at all? No. In control, a Category 1 call, the most life-threatening, is in progress. Is there anyone who can go and get a defibrillator? Uh, yes, I can. OK, and somebody will still be with the patient, yeah? Uh, yeah. Can we get him onto the floor, pull him onto the floor, OK? Right, he's on the floor. Right, OK, tail by his side, put one hand flat in the centre of his chest. So the out of his nose. Right. Now. Right, turn his head to the side to get that fluid away, OK? How old's this man? Do we know? 125, thank you. I've got a cardiac arrest in Hexham. Uh, he's only 32, over. Chris, tell him the AC car's travelling and we've just spoke to air support. Is still liquid coming out? Dominic. So keep going, push, push, push. <laughs> Is that the crew in the room? Fantastic. OK, you take care. You did brilliant. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, you feel so helpless because you yeah. can't even tell them to speed up. You can't do anything about it. Same with that one. I could just hear her screaming his name. Yeah. It's not, like, not a good age to go. Like, I think he was only in his 50s, so... Oh, no way. Roger, that's all received. Um. If I can have some details from you just for when I contact the police. The 32-year-old is deceased. It is an overdose. Oh, it's it an is. overdose. Oh, man. What a day. Every day at work, you see the best and worst of life. You see people who have had that life taken away from them when they didn't deserve it. You see, families are torn apart because they've lost somebody. The things we see are things that people would... Only time they would have experienced that is in a nightmare, but the, we live that nightmare. And it, it affects you. Wait, I'm going to jump in the front, John. Give me a shout if you need anything. After spending almost 40 minutes on scene with John, 
Paula and Phil are taking him to Cramlington Hospital. He was end lad originally. Man. Whereabouts? I used to get down to Trafford Park a lot when I used to work on the wagons. I was in Earlham. Earlham? Uh, do you know Earlham, do you? Uh, uh, yeah. I knew it wasn't a Geordie accent you had, but I couldn't place it, so that's why I asked. So it's, uh, it's, it's all changed down Salford, though, hasn't it? Fucking shit hole. Uh. I thought it had all gone posh with all the TV centre and stuff it's down the there. Same. Do you prefer it up here than down there? Yeah. Yeah. Is it better? Much better. Class. Better people? Yes. Better football? Uh, yes. I love Newcastle. I, I love it. This is fucking new. Feel it. Proud of where we're from. I'm sorry. Don't, don't apologise to me, John, all right? You've been canny with what? I'm fucked up. I'm really fucked up. It's all right, John. We're almost at the hospital. John. John. Hang on. You all right? John. 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 John, do you want to calm down? Let's just get your arm to the hospital because we're literally around the corner now. We'll get you some help. Right. Leave the cupboards. Don't, don't leave, leave the, the cupboards. cupboards. Let's just chill out for five minutes and we'll get you up there. Okay. Right. Yeah? All let's right. Let's get you around the corner. Two minutes fella. then, let's get you in. Fist bump. Nice and calm. That's it. All right. Don't hit me cupboards. I don't know what will fall out of them. Oh my fuck. I think you need a bit of help. Okay. And today's the first day of getting that help. I think everyone seeks companionship. I think we're naturally born to look for somebody else, to want to be with somebody else. Life's hard enough as it is to do things on your own. So if you've got someone to share things with, it can just make it that little bit easier. It just lightens the load. There is that saying, isn't there? Problem shared, there's a problem halved. Champion. What is three feet two? Thank you. Uh, it's just to see if you've got an update on the patient at the hospital. Uh, over. This chap initially was quite responsive to us being there. Uh, admitted he needed some help, and then uh, yeah, he he just went berserk. Is the only word I can use. It sounds like it went very wrong very fast. Are you both all right? First of all, over. Yes, uh, we're, we're both fine. Uh, appreciate you asking there. That's obviously. Thank you. Red base out. Oh, open that for me. I'm going to put this one in the bin. What do you think I am? One, two, three, four, five, six... No, stop. Listen to me. Listen. Stop. Push. Push. It's five hours into the shift, and Control have already taken over 600 calls. Just stay with him. Leave any well-fit and false teeth in place, and just let him adopt a comfortable position, OK? Feel his chest. Does it feel cold? <laughs> I've got, I've got my job to do, but I think you need to get a health advisor here. Right, you, 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 you're not you, you're refusing to touch his chest, no? Well, that's not true, because we are helping patients. OK, but obviously, if the... OK, bye-bye. She states that we are a no-service service. Heli Med 6-3 is going to Ashington. One of them days today, I'm afraid. One of them days. Right, hang on, then. I've got another cat one. Another one? Walls N232, just divert you to a further cat one, over. They're going to need a strawberry daiquiri after this. <laughs> An apology from Boris Johnson, who breaks his silence to admit attending a work event in the 10 Downing Street Garden in May 2020 when the UK was in lockdown. Mr Speaker, I want to apologise. What is he apologising for, then? Getting caught, for I think. having a party. It was a Thursday night. He should have been out clapping. Yeah, he should have been. <laughs> I went into that garden just after six on the 20th of May to thank groups of staff before going back into my office 25 minutes later. 
No, 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 I did not party in May. My baby was just born. So there was no wet in the baby's head. No the wonder everyone was like on uproar about that. One rule for one, one rule for another. Especially like when people were literally just going to work, going home, couldn't see their family. I know. When you know when my granddaughter was born? I know. Yeah, you I didn't, did, I didn't see her. Did I didn't see her for three months. Should have had a party. Well, had a... Could have been able to invite her around. <laughs> <laughs> Time to bring our own booze. Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Yes. The doctor at the surgery thinks she might be having a stroke. The patient's at home. Do we know when these symptoms have started? Yeah. No. All I know is that she's like saying things that don't make sense. Kaylee and Georgina are immediately dispatched to the suspected stroke patient. Inaccessible bungalows, these, aren't they? Mm. Hello. My name's Kaylee. This is Georgina. What's your name? Maureen. How can we help you today? Well, I've got this head, head of reg, 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 and I'm getting. Oh, Makes so, make so bad. Okay. When did it start? Hello, Maureen's house. Oh, hello, Alan. My name's Georgina. I'm a paramedic with the yeah. ambulance service. Do you feel a bit confused? Yeah. yeah. Is she normally a bit jumbled up with her words? Your nephew. No. Stroke patients have just four and a half hours from the onset of first symptoms to receive the most effective treatment. Can you pop your hands out nice and straight and leave them there? So, nephew saw her That's this fine. morning. She was perfectly fine, and he's not quite sure exactly what's happened this afternoon. Okay. I'm just going to pop this on your arm, Maureen. Do we have an onset time? Um, oh, about... sorry. <laughs> about lunchtime. Right. What time do you normally have your lunch at? At night. Uh, <laughs> at night time? Tea, tea time, about six o'clock. OK. So, what time do you normally have your midday meal? Is it at 12, or...? I would say around about 25 to 6. Right. About that. So we need to take you up to the hospital. Today? Yeah. To find out why your speech has gone a bit funny. I think we've got everything now, Maureen. I'll turn all the lights off, don't worry. Right. OK? That's Where's okay. your keys? Here. OK, I'll lock the door. Have I turned the... You've turned everything off in the kitchen. Uh, how about the... Um... The fire's off and the cooker's I'll off. I'll need to... Maureen, where are you going, sweetheart? Is it super important because we need to get you to hospital soon? No, I'm just putting it to another one at time. Ah, OK. That's all right. <laughs> Mm. Right, have a little hold on to me, Maureen. You manage? Oh, go on, lass. And if you pop your feet up and imagine you're on a beach in Barbados. Right then, I'll see you at the RVI. Thank you. No bother. So, Maureen, we're unsure if you've maybe had a stroke. OK? Do you have any children? No. No? No. I've got people driving them. Oh. Nephews? Do you have any nieces? Yes. Yeah? One niece. One niece. Have you always lived in Swalwell? I've lived here since about Fabulous. I've been five years. All right, I'm sorry to hear that. How long had you been married? 60 years. 60 years? What's the secret to, what's the secret to a lot? Aw, that's so sweet.
Nana's, they normally have a story to tell you, all the achievements they've done and how life was much different when they were younger. I'd like to spend as much time with them as we can. If their partner's passed away, it can be a very solitary life. We don't want to grow old alone. We spend a lot of time when we're younger trying to find that person that we want to grow old with. I believe that love comes when you're not looking for it. I think we're at a hospital. I think so. So I grew up in a very small village in the Mullican Tyre on the west coast of Scotland. I'd probably say I'd lived a very sheltered life until I came down here and I kind of had my eyes open to the real world. Is it? You sound like her, she cracks away. <laughs> That's it. There you go, you're off now. Right, let's see if we can get you sorted, eh? Lucha, three, three, one, go ahead. Yeah, just a quick update from hospital here with Maureen. Um, it does look like, unfortunately, she, she might have had a little stroke. She's in fairly good spirits, all things considered, um, so she's all handed over and we're clear here at the RVI. Well, at least we've got Maureen to where she needs to be, uh, so let's hope we've got her there in time. They'll get her sorted and she'll be back out in no time. Back home to do her gardening. Gardening in January? <laughs> Absolutely, she's hard as nails, this one, Maureen. Maureen was lovely. Oh. Bless her. She phoned the GP instead of phoning us. We could have probably got her to hospital like an hour or two before if she just phoned us straight away. I know, but they don't want to bother anyone, do they? I know. Oh, Nana's just break my heart, don't they? Yeah. Hey, what a day, Leslie. Right. As the day shift comes to an end, the North East Ambulance Service has attended over 700 incidents. 71 of which were Category 1 calls. There's an RTC, but everybody's pre-alerted into hospital now. Morbeth is anaphylaxis for a 12-year-old. It's been pretty hectic, really, to be honest with you. It is now in your hands. Good luck. Ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? He's breathing. Yeah, he's breathing. Just fucking hallucinating right now. He's off his nut. Your head's bleeding. Oh, yes, we face the eye, we smoke, we keep the water chipped up. I can't see we face with the ear ringing. Overnight, call handlers have answered nearly 1,000 calls. I got these fake silicone boobs, mm -hmm. so I put super strong Dorella glue on them. I managed to get the boobies off, but the whole entire back is now covered in Dorella glue and it's not coming off. Good, how are you? I'm 12 hours after going home, the day shift are back on duty once again. Morning. Yay. I thought I'd never see the end of this week. We've got there, we've managed to get through it. <laughs> oh, I know. I fell off a treadmill last night, Jude. Did you? Oh, I did like day. Felt mint. Came off the treadmill and the ground just wasn't there. And I went down like a sack of potatoes. Oh, Jordan. It's too early for your singing, Paula. Yeah, good morning. Uh, fresh and raring to go, over. At the moment, there's, uh, there's nothing outstanding. So, could I just ask you to do your daily deep clean, over? Charming. Get the clean done. This is very strange. I don't like this. It feels very strange in me waters. Feels strange in your waters? Mm. I'll, I'll get that checked out. <laughs> So you've got the window seat. Obviously, Faye, because it's my seat. <laughs> Olivia and Faye are two of the 58 call handlers tasked with answering calls for help. What are you doing today after we Get a good walk in before sleep. What were you going to do? I'll um, start in service as a patient breathing. Yes, yeah, can't breathe. So, pain is just, just tight as a pain in It's all right. Are you with them? Yeah. Hello? Hello, love. My name's Olivia. I'm from the ambulance service. I'm just going to ask you some questions to get you some help, OK? 
In those first few seconds of your pain starting, do you think it was an instant agonising pain? Was it more moderate to severe look, pain? Look, she's stuck on me. She can't keep her on because she's right. really struggling. Then, well, then well, you're going to have to tie in health as well, OK? They're going to go on for much longer. It's quite an emergency. She's not I well at all. Please listen. To get her the right help, we'll have to go through these. We're just going to delay our care if we'll sit and talk about it. What happened? You've been because of this. She's you not well at all. I'm talking over the top of this, please. Don't talk to me like that. Don't shout at I'm trying to help you. Me and I wasn't shouting at you. In the first few seconds, I need to know if it was an instant agonising you know, pain. I'm, I'm going to ask for your manager at the end of this. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was an instant agonising pain in the first few seconds. Yeah. Right. Keep a lookout for the vehicle arriving. It is a high priority ambulance. How do I make a complaint? Bear with a second, I'll get you the number, OK? Thank you. Two ticks. Hello, it's just Liv. This lady's on the phone. She's saying she wants to make a complaint about it, so I need to give her the number, but I don't know which one to give her. Complaint about you? Yep. Let <laughs> um, just check with Laura, one sec. Oh, don't cry. Do you want me to take the phone? Do you want me to take the phone off? Oh, this is really waiting as well. Right, Liv, pass the phone. I'll take the phone. Right, so if you just put her on the transfer line and just pass her straight to a team leader. Right, Go and get yourself five minutes. We don't come on the phone to speak to people nasty. That's not our job. The guy, Ollie, who used to work here, now yeah. works on the road, and he said the, um, the, the abuse that you get in yeah. here compared to on the road is absolutely yeah. crazy. Like, you obviously it's still... It's the phone, isn't it? It's like they're hiding behind the screen, almost. Yeah. Oh, my little Liv. She turned proper nasty, and, like, I wasn't being nasty at her. I did see it, well... Did Yeah, and then she was all like, I'm putting a complaint against you. Well, please don't take the heart. It's too early. Too early to deal with this. And you came into work extra. I know. I'll not be doing that again. <laughs> I've done two 12 hour shifts and a 10 hour shift yesterday, and then I'm back in today, which is fine. Do you know what I mean? I can do work, but like, it's just a bit relentless then when people try yeah. to take it like personal. Yeah. When there's just no need. Oh, bless you. I know. I'm walking the doctor and the lady cops in the car. She's moving. She looks like she's breathing, but she's flat out. What's the address of where she is? Sam Street. Has she spoken to you? No, no. I didn't approach her, actually. I feel like I'm having a constant panic attack. Okay. I can't even get out of the bed. I've got one of my residents who is saying it's very difficult to breathe and she's got oxygen saturation level of 72. Her blood pressure is 180 over 120. So that's all being arranged for you now. Let's go and see Pat. It's Kaylee and Georgina's first job of the new day shift. Do you know what I love about elderly people? Go on. They could just have like a generic name, but get like called something completely different. I think it's because they all have the same name as their parents. Like if you had the same name as your mum, it would all get rather confusing. Well, it wouldn't because I would call her mum. Yeah, but your dad wouldn't, I hope. <laughs> Good morning. Do you know what our no oxygen saturations normally are? Yeah, it's Good morning, Pat. <laughs> Try and relax, Pat. Oh, Lord. So I think there's a good chance that this is a bit of heart failure. So we're going to take it down to the RVI. One, two, three. Sharp scratch, Pat. I love your nail varnish. Oh, God. Who does? Do you do it yourself? No. It's dead before Was it? Oh, it's lasted very well. Yeah. Right then, Pat, I'll see you at the hospital. I'm going to drive. Bye. OK? She is old enough. <laughs> How long have you stayed here? Since last June. Where did you live before? I was in Foxham Court in Morgan. All right, OK. Which was lovely. Better than here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I went to a little nursing home. Oh, don't get upset. It must be a bit frustrating going from doing everything independently to... I did. Yeah. 
Here you go. Wipe those tears away, eh? We don't need those. What did you do for a job? What did you do? Oh, fabulous. Yeah, what? And I bought marriage. How long were you married for? 62 years. Oh, wow. What, what did he do? He was a bank manager. Oh, wow. And he died two and a half years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you have any children? A boy and a girl. They're both brilliant. And uh, it's six grandchildren. Six? Yeah. Any great grandchildren? No, none Not of yet. them are married. All right. Nowadays, people don't even bother to do that. Yeah, that's true. I know I'm old. I think it's a great mistake if you feel that you can't commit yourself to somebody. Yeah. Have children. A lot of people live together now but don't get married. I know. But I'm coming to the end of my life because I would not like it to be your age again. No? With what? With is, what's going on. With what's yeah. going on. I'm not that young. I'm nearly 30. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm It's a good age. And have you got a boyfriend? I'm getting married next year. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Being paramedic, a lot of it is being able to read the room. I never know how the older generation are going to take it. When they were younger, it wasn't an open thing. I don't want to put myself or the patient in an awkward situation, so I just refer to Georgina as my fiancé, and they never question it. Pop all these bits off, pet. There you go, darling. You want this one down as well? All right. No problem. That's just been telling us all about our life. Oh, I've been listening. She wouldn't want to live in our era. No, me neither, Pat, to be honest. Sorry, Ooh. Pat, we'll get you inside in the warm. Oh, dear. Sharing your life with somebody else and your troubles and your happiness and the love and the comfort of being with somebody else is a massive thing. It's weird because we never meet any elderly gay couples. No. But it'll become, no. hopefully, more normal. Yeah. Because people will get married and stay together forever in a way that you couldn't back when the current old people were young. Mm. What do you think I'll be like when I'm old? <laughs> You're already old. You love your slippers and a dressing gown. Yeah. Listen, this is really important. You need to go straight to the hospital. It's not appropriate to pop home first and see your husband. It's three hours into the shift and the North East Ambulance Service has already taken over 400 calls. Push, 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 push. Sir, no, is she breathing? No. Right, what's the address? Multiple resources are immediately dispatched to the call in progress. The closest is eight minutes away, and Liv must now stay on the line to give the patient the best chance of survival. I need you to lie her down on her back on the floor if possible. I can't get her on the floor, she's too heavy. She's, can you try and pull her onto the floor, onto a hard surface, sir? We need to start CPR as soon as we can, sir. She's on her back now. She's on her side. Right, pull her onto her back, sir. I know you're doing fine. Just come on as quick as you can, sir. Well done. Push, 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 OK? One, two, she's telling me to stop. Three. She's telling you to stop? Right. Hang on, right. So stop there then, sir. Is she talking to you? Are you talking to me, sir? Yes. Yeah. 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 She's talking to me. Right, is that her there? Come in, please. Right. And is that the crew there with you? Oh! Yeah. No. Sir? Ah, oh, he's put the phone down. 
That was amazing. She just like come back. She just came back. She just stopped. She just she went risen. There was nothing. Hey, hey, <laughs> call me Doctor Liv. Hey, <laughs> have I told you the people have been in touch? What people? I apply to do budgeting for elderly who are. Oh, on the for the elderly people. <gasps> Did you? Oh. And then I told my dad, and he was like, as if you, you haven't got enough time to do your washing, never mind. Ambulance Look, service is a patient breathing. It's a patient <laughs> away. Control are taking a new call every 18 seconds. It's a patient breathing. No, he's not breathing. No, he's actually cool. He's dead. And he trapped your foot in a rock, did he say? Yeah, I'm, I'm hanging up. I don't think they were me. OK. The service is the patient breathing. Breathing, but she's, she's really struggling. How old is the patient? 84. What's your name? I'm a husband for 57 years. Just to let you know what you're going to be, an 84-year-old female, uh, short of breath. Paula and Phil are 16 minutes away. There's Elvis in the window there. There you are. <laughs> Hello. Do you want to tell me what's happened then? Well, she was chocolate. I said, do you want a drink? She said, take Bobby Biscuit. And then all of a sudden, bang. Shirley, I need to stick these on your chest. It's as if she was having a seizure. Her eyes went real up, her mouth open. I'm just coming round here, my love, to your temperature. You're going to go to the hospital? What? Just to get to see the doctor to make sure you're all right? You're frightened? What are you frightened about? I don't like hot, but... I know. I know, but... As soon as you've been sorted at the hospital, they'll let you come home. Ready? One, two, three. Push up nice and tall. That's it. You're teeny tiny when you stand up, aren't you? Turn towards Phil. Do your little dance with Phil. I'm an ex dance teacher, professional. Ooh, what kind of dancing? Modern ballroom. Ooh! Shirley was a, a, a beautiful dancer as well. Was she? People used to say to us, we could sit and watch you two all night. What was your favourite dance? Can't, can't do that. You can't remember. But I what was to, our favourite dance? In modern sequence, we used to do foxtrot, waltz, t modern tango, quick step, yeah, lamb. Wowzers. R rumba. Mm. Right, Eric, do you want to give her a kiss? Because we're going to head off. You take care, my darling. Right? <laughs> Don't oh. cry now. Don't get yourself upset, Shirley. Don't we'll bring you upset. back. We'll get you back. They yeah, of course we will. We'll just get the doctor and have a quick look at you. They make sure everything's all right. I have to say what's wrong. Right? Right, darling? Please don't get yourself upset. She'll miss me. I'm the person that speaks for her love. That's my concern. Aye. With her dementia. Aye. She's quite upset. She can't remember what dances she used to love, so is she going to remember what happened earlier on? Uh, and you saw what happened? Yes. You might be better placed to come with us and be able to answer the questions on her behalf. I'll get me, I'll get me shoes. I'll lock the doors, take the key with us. Okay. Charlie, now I'll come back and get you. Aye. Right. Come on, then. Oh. I'll get it started up. We're going to bring Eric as well. Yeah. We're going to bring Eric so he can sit with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't tell me wife I'm sweeping up. There'll be more, as. Well, you can see what dinner was on the, on the hob. What was for dinner? Mince. Oh, very nice. Mince and potatoes? Uh, mince, boiled potatoes, peas, a, a green cabbage. Uh, no, right, let's get your shoes on. We'll get her down the hospital. Oh, rag shoes. Right, right, where's the other ones? That's in the same place. Which is in here? No, just doing the same. Oh, there. just down there. Have you warmed up a little bit? Are you warm enough? Banana. Oh, yeah, fucker. I was having trouble. I'm trying to... You're putting it around, bit. I'm trying to put around. Bit in by this stupid man. <laughs> and I locked the back door. Yes, it's I? locked. I've checked it for you as well. Right. Challenge. I bet it is. That's it, we're going up. There you go. Just walk on nice and slowly. 
Pop your seatbelt on as well, okay? Hi, hi. I'll be there. You'll be happy, I know. I know you are. So no flirting with me in the back while your wife's watching. I won't do that. Oh, would you not? She knows I love the woman. Oh, well, there you go then. But I wouldn't do nothing to her. Good. Well, after 50 odd years, I should think not really. 50 what? 57 years? 57. Were you married on uh, Easter Saturday? Oh, what lovely. 58 years. 58 years. 58 years? So two more years and you get a big present. People that have been together for that amount of years have potentially got a bit more stay in power. That mentality that they would have that a marriage was for life. Whereas now, that's definitely not always the case. I'd like to have seen you dancing. I kind of do what I used to do. No, I know. I'll just support you. My grandparents, they've been married for 70 years. When my marriage broke up, I thought they would say to me, you've made your bed, you lie on it, and you suffer the consequences, because I think that's what they did a little bit. They had that kind of wartime spirit where you powered through everything. Okay. I know you're missing your dinner. I know. Vincent Dumplings. <laughs> oh, they're a nice little couple, then, weren't they? Yeah. Old snake hips, Eric there. <laughs> <laughs> like Newcastle's version of Len Goodwin. Yes, it could have been. <laughs> Seven! Seven! <laughs> Back with three, three, two, thank you. It's just to get an update on Shirley. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, managed to get Shirley into the hospital. Um, we've uh, got her husband to travel in with her due to the fact that she's got dementia. I had some nice stories about how they used to do some dancing when they were younger and how her husband was a dance teacher. Oh, that's lovely. How long have they been together? 58 years. 58 years. Now, that's my goal. When I eventually settle down and find someone, that day will come eventually, I think. I think that's my ultimate goal. Yeah, I'm afraid for me to get there, I'm probably going to have to live until I'm in my uh, mid-hundreds. So, uh... <laughs> oh, you'll get there, man. You just need to find yourself a dance teacher like Erin. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I do. I might start taking some classes, Emma. I'm glad we've got uh, Shirley where she needs to be and obviously still with Eric, so at least stop the little bit of anxiety yeah. and let's uh, hope to have a speedy recovery of her. Good base out. Everyone wants to have companionship. I'm very friend-oriented. I wouldn't be the person I am if it wasn't for having my group of friends around. I couldn't imagine being on my own, living on my own, being lonely, having no one to talk to. I don't do well with my own company. Really don't do well with my own company. Everyone should have someone. There should be someone out there for everybody. No one should be alone. But it does happen, and it's sad, very sad. Okay. It's seven and a half hours into the shift, and Control have already taken over 1,100 calls. I can't just decide that she gets a higher priority of ambulance just because of her age and because she's sat by herself, I'm afraid. We have to prioritise immediately life-threatening emergencies first. The lady collapsed on the floor. Anne, can you hear me? Yes. Have you ever had a stroke in the past? I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying, can you? I can't understand either. Can you say that again? Hi again, Anne. Well, let's talk. I can't, the way she's talking, is, is, is that normal for her or does it sound different? I believe it was different. It has gone down the stroke for this one just due to the slurred speech, but I don't actually know if she's inside or outside. It's a bit strange for the passerby calling, um, so I think it might be a little bit of a surprise for you when you get there, over. I wonder if someone's seen her through the window or something. Strange, isn't it? I think it's one of these. She's not outside, are you? No. Hi. Hello. Right, champion. He's, he's done everything. Do you know any idea how long she's been on the floor for? Since half two. Half two. Hello. Hello, doggy. And my name's Phil, and I've got Paula here. 
Any pains where I'm pressing? <laughs> Pardon? A tickles. A tickles. Sorry. Did you use have to force entry? No, no. Um, the gentleman seen the over in the back of the room. Uh -huh. He stopped. He's followed the dog inside the room. So your dog's helped you. What's your dog called? Barney, Barney. hello. Barney's the hero. Oh, he's shaking. Come here, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been down here? Since you, well, you haven't lost your Scottish twang, have you? You never do. You never do. Keep going. No, we'll sit go. down, sit down. That's it, you've landed, my love. Oh, Lord. We're like a set of bagpipes. And who's Prime Minister? Could you call him? I know we're wrong, there's volunteers. Just listen to your breathing. I think he wants to come up now. Can I lift him up? Will he be okay? There you go, Baba. Oh, is your mummy's boy? Aye. Aye. I'm going to just pop this mask on you just for a second. Just your, your chest's really wheezy. There we go. How much alcohol do you drink, Anne? Well, I'll have fun, you think. I'll have one in the south tonight. Right, this says 18 bottles of Baileys. <laughs> Christmas presents. Christmas presents. Okay. four visits a day with carers. Do you, do you... I mean, this year is a half-hour visit to give Anne some tea. Just definitely not... Not, not herself. Good state, no. Yeah, but you want to get her care home. We're not going to send you into a care home. If it's all right, we would like to pop you down to the RVI and let the doctors down there have a look at you. Oh, no. I don't want to go down. Nobody does, my love. But if I take my oxygen away, your oxygen levels are dropping to a level that's below what you normally are. You're leaning to one side. Because I've been sitting on a chair. OK. Your blood pressure's on the low side. You look under the weather. You don't look very well at all. We don't want it to get worse and you end up in hospital because you, you're really, really poorly, do you know what I mean? And get you sorted so you can come home and back to Barney. Sure, can we get our stretcher and get you fixed? Aye, champion. Would your son take the dog? Aye. OK, we'll get you wrapped up in a blanket. Anybody in if it wasn't no, no, they'll take anybody in who needs to be there, Anne. <sighs> OK? If you haven't got the virus and you're poorly, you still need to go to hospital. <laughs> when did he get his hair cut? He looks like he's just been sculpted. Yesterday. Yesterday. You're just exhausted, my love, aren't you? Shall I just leave you to have a snooze? No. I'll just keep chatting at you. Oh, all right, then I will. So what do you have in your Baileys, then? Just ice? Yeah, good for you. Champion. Oh, Anne, let's get you inside. It's freezing. I've handed this patient over. Uh, basically, she's just had a fall in the house today and the dogs got out into the street and somebody's followed the dog into the house and found her on the floor. So Barney the dog has saved the day here. Uh, I do need to put a social referral in for Anne here. I think she needs some extra care. Yeah, of course. Oh, nice one, Barney. What a little, what a little legend. Uh, yes, uh, Barney's going to stay with uh, Anne's son. Oh, that's great. As long as Barney's all right as well, and I hope he gets a, a good uh, a good tea tonight for, for saving Anne. Fingers crossed, Barney and her get a new crib at some point. Yeah. Where she's safe. And if Barney does get out, he's not going to get onto the road. Imagine that. That would be disastrous. meeting with the DJ tonight, 8 o'clock. Have we? Can't be late. He 
is going to chat through kind of what we want for the evening reception. Yeah, so I quite fancy a piper. She's not sure whether he'll be able to do Bruno Mars. I would quite like to be piped down the aisle. Yeah. Um, are you just going to be piped down the aisle as well? No. Right. Interesting. <laughs> so we're having a piper for a all of two minutes, correct? <laughs> yes. Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Yeah, I don't think you know. Oh, I hope that's not real. So do I. I hope to God that's not real. Hanging. Three, two, just four. come this in as a hanging. Two as a hanging. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, I'll just keep you updated as you're travelling over. Two, four, you're going to be first on scene. I've got an Ashton crew travelling for you. As the day shift comes to an end, there are 18 people waiting for an ambulance. I can't just say without saying, if you keep swearing at me, I'm going to have to hang up. Is your friend struggling desperately for every breath he's taken? I can not know he's on his last legs. Her consciousness level is decreasing. She keeps shifting in and out of consciousness. Just want to check um, if she's breathing steady and regular every few seconds. One minute okay. she's for one minute she's not. Right, OK. So just say now, every time she takes a breath there, OK? 311, thank you. Um, it is coming in for a female. Patient's on the floor. Um, I think she's gone down. That's going down in a rest now, that dude. It is going down to see that CPR's being given, um, but it was initially unconscious, but now it's going down insufficient breathing. Um, so it looks like it's going to be in a rest over. This is why you should never book a meeting after work. Bravo Lima 331, Kaylee and Georgina are immediately dispatched to the Category 1 call. That's where we're getting married. It is. They will be joined by a second ambulance. An EVAC crew specialising in moving patients with complex needs are also travelling. Okay, she's in the toilet. Right. Is she breathing? She's breathing. Oh, have you get pet? No bother, it's not a cardiac arrest. Not quite sure about patient condition yet, it's just not an arrest. What, so what's happened, Tori? Can somebody... So she's had a collapse and bumped her head? Yes, she's had a collapse and bumped her head and she's fell on her hip. So what's the, the reason that she's got pins in her hip? She was a trainee firefighter. She fell off the ladder, oh. smashed her pelvis. Oh, dear. She's just trying to be independent. Yeah. She's going to need to be sorry, Pat. It's not going to be comfortable. I think it's going to have to be quick and painful. I'm really sorry, Ruby. I'm going to straighten this leg. <laughs> Second crew are here. Sorry, Ruby. Mm. Couple of big breaths on that, Ruby. Well done. We're going to get you to the hospital and get get you scanned, OK? What's the other half called? Jack. Oh, uh, I thought that was going to be the J. If not, we'd have some questions. I'd share someone else's yeah, initial round her neck. Yeah. Take that up. <laughs> I'll put that in your bedroom for you. Brought it for... Uh, oh, uh, yes. Sorry. The anniversary. How long have you been together? Oh, you got a wedding planned? No. No? Oh, you'll have to get on to him. <laughs> You're OK. We're going to slide you down the stairs. Ruby will be taken to the Royal Victoria Infirmary in the additional ambulance. Ruby, another couple of bumps, sweetheart. Kaylee will travel with her whilst Georgina follows. We'll check your blood pressure again, and I've got a little bit of morphine left you can have, OK? I know you're scared. Take some nice deep breaths in for us. Have you? Can we give you a bit of sugary gel just to rub around your mouth? Just a little bit at a time, is that OK? Because your sugar's a little bit low. And that might be why you're falling. Couple of little bumps, Ruby. Don't panic. Well, that wasn't what we had planned. No. Oh, the joys of the job, isn't it? I've spoken to Dan, the DJ, and apologised. <laughs> Are you excited? Of course I am. I can't wait to go and get my suit fitted. Yeah? I'm going to look so sharp. I think I'm more, in, like, obviously excited to marry you, mm -hmm. but I'm super excited to go on honeymoon. <laughs> I've been looking into Fiji. Of course you have. It does look wonderful, but apparently, similar to the Maldives, not a lot to do. <laughs> 
And I've asked loads and loads of elderly people, what's the secret to a long and healthy marriage? And most people say is one, don't go to bed on an argument, and two, grow with each other and don't grow apart. Still looking forward to spending the day in my Udi tomorrow. With the heating on full? Yes. Not a care in the world for the gas bill. 332, thank you very much for the day. I am definitely going to take Eric's tips, learn how to dance, so I can wow someone for 60 years, I think, of it. I think you actually should, and then give us a bit of a display when you've learned some moves, have <laughs> Yeah, I'll come all the way at the back with just for you. No problem at all. No big thing to wait for the bad to me. I think we can learn a lot from the older generation, but the attitudes towards love and relationships and diversity has progressed so much. I don't think anything beats where we are now. That's me, boy. <laughs> Bye. I always say to my friends who think that they find somebody, if you think 20 years down the line and you can't see them as part of your life, they're not sole companion for you. Can't you see? The drug for me. I do think there's somebody out there for everybody and you probably need to kiss a lot of frogs so you find that one person. But when you do, you'll know. I was going to say I'll see you tomorrow, but, like, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs>